Welcome, welcome. My name is Wendy Literal. I'm with Creation Depot, and today we're going to be talking about what mistakes are the top mistakes I see on small business websites. All right, so we got top five today, so let's get started. The very first one I see all the time on unprofessional websites, um, and this is very important for all you DIYers out there, is that you try to cram too much on one page. The sign of a professional design site is content that has been curated, meaning that it has been laid out in a way that people can look at it and figure out exactly what they want and then move on to the end goal, whatever the end goal is, if it's like an email sign up or whatever, whatever you want them to do. The content needs to move them towards that goal. So if you've got a whole bunch of things on a web page, you're saying, hey, give me your attention, give me your attention, give me your attention, give me your attention, and the person's just getting lost. And plus, if you have a ton of text on a page, for example, or even a ton of images, if the images don't all tell a story to get to, a, to an end goal, they're just gonna get lost. So you're putting all this stuff on a page thinking, oh, well, Google's gonna pick it up. Well, Google might pick it up, but then when a person gets there, is the person going to be able to figure out what you want them to do? Are they gonna be able to read about how great your company is? Are they gonna be able to figure out what service you sell quickly, easily, and then move on to the next thing? So in most design, less is more because you don't want to give the person too many options. It's like death by options. They have too many options they're just not gonna do anything. So first mistake I see all the time, don't cram everything onto one page. Make multiple pages. Scrolling is okay and clicking is okay. So just keep that in mind. Number two, the second thing I see all the time is people use stock photography. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of stock photography. I think it is extremely useful when used in the right circumstances, but what happens a lot is that people replace themselves with stock photography. And let me give you an example. They will use either a team avatar or um, like they'll get like an icon and represent that as the missing picture for the team member. Or they will use a photo of a whole bunch of people shaking hands for their team um, page or they'll use it for their home page. Or they will have stock photography in place of a product, for example, like or a service. Usually it's services, not products, um, where they'll have a photo that shows like the feeling they're supposed to get when they use the product. No, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter if you take a, a cruddy little thing with your camera, like your cell phone camera, just take something that is real because that is going to connect emotionally more with your customer than any kind of stock photography you could find. Stock photography does have its place, don't get me wrong, but, and there's a big but, you are trying to connect with a human. Remember, you are trying to connect with a human. And if you just send them something robotic, and sometimes stock photography can really come off as mannequin-like, you don't want that. You want something to connect with. They're looking to connect with you, or the person at that company. So make that happen. Number three. The third mistake I see all the time is people will make a photo in, in Canva or PicMonkey or Photoshop even, and they will have all this kind of fancy fonts and it will look great. It'll look like an awesome like little banner image they got going on. But the problem with burned in text, which is text that is saved into an image so that you can't like highlight the text on the page, the problem with that text being part of the image is that Google can't read it at least not yet, or at least not in a way that's reliable. <laughs> so what's happening is, is that because Google can't see it, um, the people that are searching for you can't see it. So all text on a page should be selectable is the easiest way to put it. Um, it should be something you can highlight with your cursor and it's good to go. And the other problem with this is that when you start getting into responsive design, which is when you have your, your main desktop and then you have tablet design, screen size and then you have a mobile screen size, those images with burned in text do not scale well. So, but fonts, it's like if you put your text on top of an image and then have that shrink down, that text is gonna match whatever screen it's on and you don't have to worry about it. But if it's inside the image, it's just gonna get smaller and blurrier and pixelated and it's gonna be a problem. All right, number four. So the fourth thing that I run into all the time, especially on sites that have been live for a very long time, um, nobody bothers to hook up the social media links. Now typically what happens is, is that a person will get a WordPress site and they'll get the WordPress theme installed, but then they either can't figure out how to do it or they just don't do it. Um, and they don't hook up their social media links. So they'll have the icons at the bottom and they'll have them at the top, like in the header and the footer, 
but then they never link them up. And it's, it's usually because they just can't figure out how to do it. Pro tip, it's probably in the widgets of your site or the theme options of your site if you're on WordPress. Um, but not having them linked up is a 404 page. And that kind of links in a little bit to my, my, like my number five. They're kind of linked here. But on your social media, you really need to have it linked to where it's going or remove it. And number five, if you can figure out, is having your content be not under construction. <laughs> now, what happens is, is that, so this kind of relates to the 404. You don't want to have dead links on your site. You don't want to have sites that are links that just don't work. Um, you don't want to have it go to a 404 page, which is an error page because the page doesn't exist. And you don't want to have it go not be linked up at all. But number five is more making sure that your site has content that's not out of date. So for example, um, if your company has changed direction, you need to go through that site and call anything that is, is no longer relevant because that stuff will work against you in your SEO and it will also work against you in your future leads. You need to get rid of it. Um, the other thing I see a lot is if team members have left, if they are still on the about page for the team members. Um, another one is that if they have moved, a lot of times people will remember to update their address, but they don't remember to update it everywhere because on your website, and that's what we're talking about, they do typically tend to remember to update it there, but you need to update it on Yelp. You need to update it on Google business listings. You need to update it in any directories that you might be in that are specific to your industry. Like if you're listed with a union or if you're listed with the Better Business Bureau, all those places, not just your business cards, not just your website, all those places need to have the updated address because Google, when it does its searches, is searching for localities as well. So it's going to bring, if, if you're local to somebody that's searching, you're going to come up higher in the ranks than somebody that's, say, you know, an hour away. But if you're still listed as being somewhere else, that's not going to work for you <laughs> because Google doesn't realize that you're just not there anymore. So you need to make sure that your information on your site is up to date. Your contact information and any other information that is pertinent for your company needs to be updated as well. And that includes getting rid of old blog posts that maybe aren't relevant anymore. It includes getting rid of um, or updating your about page or updating your products and services page. You gotta make sure this stuff is content. Remember, a website is never dead. You know, you know, you're never done with a website. It's something that is a living document and you're gonna be updating constantly as long as you have your business. It is not something that you should just let go. And the more you update your site, the happier Google is anyway. It thinks that your site is active, it's alive, and that it should re-index it all the time and then puts it up in the rankings as well. So those are the top five things I see problems with websites. So that's gonna do it for the top five. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, it is the quickest way to reach me because I'm constantly on YouTube, so I see them right away. Um, if you could leave a like and subscribe, it does help for the channel. We are at 75 subscribers. I'm so excited. Like this channel has just like skyrocketed. It's awesome. So I really appreciate the subscriber because it does make the YouTube guys happy and it just gets the video seen more and it, you know the deal. So, all right, that's it for now. Take care. I'll talk to you next time.